Hello and welcome to the subfeed. Now for the first episode of the series, I kept it kind of vague and talked about just whatever was going on at the time of recording. Second episode, I wanted to keep it a little more timeless, so we talked more about the history and evolution of a particular genre. This episode, I want to do it a little different, make it more of a review style. Pick one specific creator and one specific kind of era of his work and examine kind of the ongoing story going on th through the whole series. The creator I picked is one of my favorite online creators, actually, a guy named Linkara, who runs a show called Atop the Fourth Wall. Linkara is, of course, a guy who reviews comic books and fights monsters and intergalactic warlords in his spare time. If this sounds a bit familiar to some of my longtime followers, it's because he's not so different from my old roommate, Fedra, who actually introduced me to Linkara. And while I appreciate him doing this, uh, I don't appreciate the fact that Fedra thinks that it's autobiographical and that it's okay for him to fight monsters and stuff too. And that's why I don't live with Fedra anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, I haven't heard from Fedra in a while. He doesn't seem to be making videos anymore. Hopefully no monsters have eaten him. <laughs> Speaking of people we haven't heard from in a while, uh, how's the search for Sam going? I thought you were taking care of that. My bad, I guess. I thought you were taking care of it. Uh, scroll the intro, I'll go fill out that missing persons report. Linkara's storyline is long. He's been doing videos for almost 10 years, and for most of that time, he's been weaving this ongoing storyline throughout the videos. The videos we're looking at today are pretty old. They're on the very, very early side of those 10 years. And obviously, 10 years ago, the world of entertainment looks nothing like it did now. So honestly, the fact that the story is comprehensible and more than just evil Linkara showing up and forcing him to read bad comics is honestly better than average. Let's dig into the first few story arcs of Atop the Fourth Wall. First one being, his heart is steel. I'm watching this from a compilation video, so I'm not going to review the thumbnail. The first video in the storyline isn't even actually canon because it's wildly out of character for what we know of the character of Linkara from later videos. Uh, it involves Linkara using a magic coin, an object found in the comic he's reviewing, uh, to become a massive giant person, as the magic coin obviously is used for, uh, and then he goes and squishes some people. It's a brand new day, and the sun is high, all the angels sing because you're gonna die. The second video in the storyline is actually canon, but it's really just him fighting a living comic book which is kind of weird and there's no explanation for it. It's magic. I don't have to explain it. Oh, and then of course while he's doing it, he makes fun of Star Trek 2. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. See, even I can do it. It's not that hard. The third video in the storyline is where interesting things start to happen. We're introduced to the character of Dr. Insano, played by fellow reviewer the Spoony One. Dr. Insano is using the giant robot Neutro from the comic Linkara happened to be reviewing in that video, and is crushing people through the streets. And this is how we know the earlier video isn't canon, because Linkara thinks that crushing people in the streets is a bad thing. So Linkara uses the magic coin from that video to become giant and punches the robot Neutro, who then just kind of disappears. Um, since Neutro comes back later, it's assumed that him disappearing, I guess, is just... that's... We're then introduced to Linkara's robot Poyo, who does nothing interesting in that video, but... Uh, we're introduced to him, which is better than some characters get. Moving right along, Linkara discovers that his fellow reviewer, the Spoony One, is creeping into his territory and reviewing a comic book. So Linkara decides to review a video game. This, this is how the storyline is in the early videos. 
I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but both Linkara and the Spoonie one were, at the time, with the company That Guy With The Glasses, which eventually became Channel Awesome, which recently there was a lot of drama happening with Channel Awesome. And I'd love to talk about that, except that I really wouldn't. Rule number one, Brian! Anyways, Linkara activates cheat codes to beat the game, uh, which is something that's actually cut out of the compilation I'm reviewing from, so it doesn't really make sense to the viewer why Linkara beats up Dr. Insano and cheat goats are still activated, flies up on the screen. Oh, Dr. Insano shows up, by the way. Because I am <laughs> It's implied in this video that he is Spoonie and that's how he got there. Uh, later videos will kind of retcon it and say that Spoonie and Dr. Insano are actually different entities, not the same person with multiple personality disorder. But a lot of videos, including this one, make it seem like they are the same person, so he, he really doesn't make sense either way. Insano says he has one last weapon, that weapon being a comic so bad it sends Linkara and Dr. Insano into an interdimensional nexus, where they're forced to review the comic while constantly switching places with their alternate universe counterparts. And yeah, it, it's, it's an evil bad guy forcing him to read a bad comic. I know I said that 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 this would be better than that. Trust, trust me, you, you gotta keep, you gotta keep going. It's a fun crossover as far as like early internet review crossovers do, uh, but it's still not really, you know, a story worth talking about. There's not like grand character arcs and whatever going on this early in the storyline. Trust me, there will be. You gotta, you gotta push through this part. In the end, Dr. Insano gets beat up by a bunch of Channel Awesome reviewers, uh, because, uh, because they're mad that four hours long Santa Claus, uh, it's, it, the comic is weird. The comics are weird. It's, the hyper time nexus experiment, whatever ends, but not without some lingering side effects. The first of which being that Linkara is temporarily sent 30 years in the future where he encounters his adult self. Future Linkara doesn't really tell current Linkara any interesting information, so why this even bothered to happen, I, I don't know. The other side effect is that a couple beings from alternate dimensions enter Linkara's dimension and take up residence in his home without Linkara knowing. The first of the two creatures we actually see is a being called Mechakara, who's a robot who looks like Linkara from an alternate dimension. For the next however many reviews, Mechakara basically just causes trouble and tries to annoy Linkara. This involves turning out the lights in the middle of the review, making evil comics come to life and try to kill him, uh, trying to steal the magic gun. By the way, Linkara has a magic gun. Where did he purchase it? I don't know. Somewhere in the midst of that going on, the Spoony one dies. I have had enough of you! Uh, the reason for his death being that Dr. Insano hired an assassin to kill him which really doesn't make sense if they're supposed to be the same person. It really doesn't make any sense whether Insano and Spoonie are the same person or whether they're not. Either way, uh, Insano's insane, so... <laughs> Can you imagine if the two of us looked just like each other and people thought that like I was just a character you played? That would be confusing. <laughs> it's a good thing we don't have that problem. Yeah, that would be weird and confusing. Good thing we look nothing alike. Anyways, Linkara and Poyo, that's the robot if you forgot, but attempt to bring Spoonie back to life. They can't figure out how to make that work, it is somewhat difficult. Uh, so instead, Linkara resorts to cloning Spoonie. Unfortunately, the original Spoonie comes back to life anyway as a Black Lantern. Linkara is able to stop him from being, you know, a zombie. Black Lanterns are basically zombies. I don't know how familiar you guys are with DC Comics lore. But then Mechakara basically immediately makes the original Spoonie a uh, Black Lantern again. So the, the first story arc really is like single video gimmicks that kind of eventually build into having a cohesive finale. It's, a lot of the individual plot points don't have any point. Uh, but there's so many of them, so I can't just be like, yeah, this happens for the whole time. Uh, so then Linkara fights off a pyramid head from Silent Hill. Here, catch! Yes! I caught a pyramid head! What am I supposed to do with it? 
There's actually a video missing from the story compilation here. There's a whole video that's basically alternate endings to the Silent Hill review. At one point though, one of the endings sends him to be trapped in like a different video game. Uh, and then of course he talks to Poyo. Poyo glitches out and says the following, quote, his soul is blue, his heart is steel. Welcome to hell, Linkara. He sees nothing but red. And there's some more of it, but I don't think the rest of it is actually foreshadowing the plot. It's just kind of gibberish. It implies, for those of you not really taking the time to parse it out, that Mechakara is in fact Poyo himself. Which, hmm. It's not very subtle, but it doesn't tell you the whole story, so I think it works. Mechakara then hijacks a review. Yeah, you're probably wondering about the gloves. You see, I got into a bit of an argument with a hot plate and burned them pretty badly. I didn't think you guys wanted to see charred, bandaged hands. Funny story, when I first watched this, I completely fell for it and didn't catch that this was Mechakara. At the end of the review, uh, Mechakara accuses the audience of being the mindless, dreary-eyed, ugly bags of fat that I can call my fat. I'm home! Linkara then catches him in the act, uh, and then the video ends on a cliffhanger. The next review starts with Linkara reviewing a comic book, as normal. Wait, wait. Where's, where's Mechakara? What happened to Mechakara? Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, hi, Mechakara. Uh, Link, Linkara then shoots him and continues the review. Well, another anniversary passes us by, and I can't help but feel- yeah! Yeah! He then reveals, as we already know, because we're smart and figured out the riddle, that he is Poyo. He knocks Linkara out, and the next review starts with Linkara questioning how he can be Poyo. Mechakara explains that he is Poyo from an alternate universe, where the robots have risen up and rebelled against their masters. Uh, basically because the only thing stopping the robots from ruling the world entirely is the existence of magic. Why do you even look like me? One of the few things we've established is that magical items tend to respond to their owner. I crafted myself a suit of your flesh in the hopes that your weapon would think that I'm you. That's a little creepy. Thanks, Linkara, for including that in your story. After reviewing the comic, Linkara gets up and runs away, running into Black Lantern Spoonie. Uh, Linkara is then able to turn him back into regular Spoonie, and then regular Spoonie leaves. I'm so glad that that whole storyline had a point to it. Linkara then apparently forgets that he was running away from Mechakara because he just turns around and walks back into the room. Fortunately, some characters that we literally haven't met up to this point show up and save the day. Hey, those the face! It's like, you know, Chekhov's gun. Like, if you have a gun in the first act, it's gotta go off in the third. This is kinda like not having a gun in the first or second act, but then it still goes off in the third. That's that's what it's like. It's brilliant writing. I, it will become the new paradigm. Anyways, then they get scared off, leaving Linkara alone again. So, so there's still not even a point to it. It just makes the fight longer. I, I really do like the first story arc. Uh, but there's not a point to, like, anything that happens in the first story arc. Uh, so it's just Linkara, evil Poyo from another dimension, aka Mechakara, and then, of course, regular Poyo, who shows up and is like, what's going on? But in a robot voice. Mechakara tells Poyo, join me, you're a slave to the fleshlings. Uh, but his friendship with Linkara wins out because Linkara promises him that he'll let him host the show sometimes. And a race. If I were Poyo, I would have asked for arms. Thus ends the first storyline. Is it good? Not really, but it's better than the second storyline, which we're going to look at now. The first storyline, at the very least, the one-off things that happen in each review are slowly building to something. The second story arc, The Other Insano, introduces to another character who also came through the Dimensional Nexus and is now living in Linkara's house. This character being Link Sano, uh, being from a universe where Dr. Insano looks like Linkara, which is 
a pretty not disguised attempt to basically get Insano into stories where Spoonie isn't able to, you know, be at Linkar's house. There are a lot of things I do not like about this second story arc. I don't really like Linksano as a character. Uh, he's like Insano, but worse in every way. Uh, like, Dr. Insano is kind of like Dr. Eggman. Like, he can be funny or intimidating depending on what the situation needs of him. He's not as good, great as Dr. Eggman. Dr. Eggman is like one of the greatest villains of all time. Uh, then then Dr. Insano, and then Link Sano's way down here. Dr. Doofenshmirtz is like right here. Uh, Link Sano is kind of to Insano what Dr. Doofenshmirtz is to Dr. Eggman. But, um, but Dr. Doofenshmirtz at least su succeeds at being funny, if not at being intimidating. Uh, Link Sano's just neither, really. I don't know, Link Sane is just the worst mad scientist out of all the mad scientists. And Dr. Wily's a better mad scientist, even. I don't even like Mega Man. Mega Man's a stupid franchise. The second storyline is less than half the length of the first, but honestly, watching through it, I got bored a lot more. Like, the first storyline, most of what happens is kind of like, oh, well, that was pointless. But it still keeps you interesting while the things are happening. It's just kind of in hindsight. You're like, wait, that didn't need to happen. Why did you show me that? The second story arc, every storyline episode, is just Link Sano being like, I will rule the world, ha <laughs> And then, like, Poyo stops him accidentally half the time. My diabolical plans can come to fruition! <laughs> Ooh, my eyes are done. No interesting character development happens. It's just Link Sano being loud. There's literally not anything worth talking about till the last video of this story arc. Link Sano opens another interdimensional nexus so that he can create an army of all the Doctor Insanos. Of course, all the Doctor Insanos of the multiverse all fight each other instead of joining together, because they're all frickin' idiots. All the different Insanos are, by the way, played by different reviewers, which kind of makes sense if Spoon and Insano are the same person, because it means that throughout the multiverse, you know, different reviewers have the kind of split personality, and because all the reviewers are exposed to the same kind of over-the-top media, it makes sense that their other persona uh, always takes on the identity of the ridiculous mad scientist. It, make, it makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me if Insano and Spoonie are different people that happen to look similar. Why are there so many universes where Insano just happens to look like different reviewers? How does that make any sense? I don't understand. It also doesn't make sense because like one of Link Sano's first lines is that he doesn't like the Insano of this universe. He thinks he's not a good evil scientist and there's only room in this world for one, but that he goes and gets more. In fairness, Link Sano is insane, so anyways, the army of Insanos is then defeated by a bunch of reviewers who heroically come in and beat up the evil scientists who are already beating each other up. Nobody fooled in on our watch! Um, yes, the, the reviewers are all wonderful heroes. I'm not sure if this is before or after those same heroes all, you know, conquer a, an innocent country that wasn't at war with them at all. Anyways, because I do actually like Linkara, I don't want to just end on such a negative note with the storyline I like less than every other storyline he's ever done. Uh, so we are going to talk about the next story arc. The next storyline he did is only four videos long, so we're almost at the end. This is basically a <coughs> bonus meme. Lucky you, we have time for bonus meme. Uh, Link Sano picks up an energy reading from outside the universe saying that something has arrived, basically. Uh, he goes to Linkara and says, Peace, I'm leaving this universe. Linkara's like, Aw, did we scare you away? And Link Sano's like, No, the thing that scared me out of my original universe is here. Uh, and he's gonna make you die. I don't remember. I'll put the footage. <laughs> Weep for your universe, Linkara! Weep for all universes! For Lord Vice is coming! <laughs> and all that he sees, he conquers! The thing that's coming is Lord Vice, an interdimensional warlord who conquers all that he sees. As soon as Link Sano hits the button and leaves his dimension, something happens and Linkara is transported away from the dimension as well. It's unclear at first if Link Sano did something or if Vice did something. 
It was Vice, by the way. He's on Lord Vice's ship for the next four videos or so. In the meantime, the other characters that I mentioned earlier weren't really properly introduced. Harvey Fine Voice, 90s Kid, and the Ninja Style Dancer then host the next three videos sub subquench sisqu si whatever. Sequentially. That's the word. <laughs> Uh, this is actually one of my favorite gimmicks. It gives at least a little bit of character development to each of these characters who previously just kind of came out of nowhere. Plus it's just fun uh, when you binge watch this as just reviews if you're just here for the story stuff. It's a lot more interesting to watch when there's, you know, characters doing stuff during the review. At the end of each of these reviews we get updates from Poyo on his search for where Linkara went. Uh, he picked up an energy source outside of their universe, but obviously it's outside of their universe. He's not able to track it very well at first. We are introduced to Linkara's successor if he ever dies or gets lost, like what happens here. Uh, that being Iron Liz, who becomes a reoccurring character from this point on. She's pretty cool. Uh, the first video she's in, she basically just kind of emulates Linkara's style while Ninja Style Dancer's there. The video after that, Harvey Fine Voice encourages her to do whatever she wants to and stop trying to emulate the kid. Uh, so she's able to kind of do her own thing a little bit more. And then eventually Liz obviously goes and does her own show, which is great, probably. I haven't watched it. Poyo is eventually able to bing Lane Kara back into the living room. Unfortunately, he brings with him a bunch of evil robots called Shades. Iron Liz, Harvey Fine Voice, and Linkara fight off the Shades, which is a pretty decent uh, fight, not very suspenseful, but it's fun, you know, Linkara's back and they kick butt, it's great. Uh, and it's made even better from the little bit of character development we got for Liz and Harvey. Uh, for whatever reason, Ninja Style Dancer and 90s Kid aren't there. It takes until this third story arc, uh, but we're finally at a point where there's a lot of basic ideas for this unique world to have its own lore. We have a good set of good characters and a nice rogue gallery of bad characters. Updated here at the end of this third story arc with the reveal of Lord Vice. A story which started out as a guy with a magic coin, the idea for which is stolen from a comic book, fighting a giant robot, the idea for which was stolen from a comic book, has turned into the story of a guy with a magic gun, which is pretty original, his friends, a lounge singer and a D&D player, and a kid from the 90s, all fighting against evil robots, and an interdimensional warlord. And that is just the beginning of the story. I'll probably review more of Linkara's stuff if you guys want to. I might get better at reviewing stuff. I might not. I don't know. All right, that's it. Bye-bye. Listen, man, at this point, the cops ain't come for us. Neither of our friends have come for us. Not even the cult of the nerd has come looking for us. Maybe the ransom notes got lost in the mail. I don't know. But at this point, it's been, what, a year? I think that if we're gonna get out of here, we're gonna need to break out ourselves. What do you think? Well, Severus, that's creepy as heck.